welcome to, oh, I should open the blind a bit more. Hello, hello, hope you're all amazing. And if you are not, I hope my video or this vlog puts a smile on your faces and makes you laugh. Another manga vlog, which I totally wasn't planning on doing, but um, I was debating for this week's video and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna struggle for time because this weekend I'm pretty busy for certain reasons, I'll probably say maybe somewhere in the video, but I thought today I've got kind of free and tomorrow, so I don't know if this little manga tea vlog is going to go into tomorrow, but I decided, hey, let's, let's do one. But currently it's nine o'clock, I'm just about to have my breakfast and hopefully read something. Um, probably you won't see me until a bit later on because I gotta go to the gym and then um, sometime during the afternoon is when my huge chunk of reading is going to occur. But I will show you guys what I will be reading because this vlog is not just gonna involve um, manga because uh, I do have quite a bit of manga borrowed from the library. If those that don't follow me on Twitter, I put up a picture of a few different kind of books that I got um, borrowed from the library, which are some graphic novels, actual comics. And um, I felt inspired by um, a fellow Instagrammer I follow uh, named Rainy Reading. And she just went on about in her Instagram stories all the stuff she's gotten over the last couple of months and in there with these Power Ranger comics. And I'm like, wow. They look so cool and like I never grew up with comics and um, I just thought I really should go look at the comic section in my library. I've never looked at the comic section. I picked up a few graphic novels, the totally random picks. Um, some are like DC and Marvel and then some are just these random little ones I found. So uh, the first one I would like to read today, which I've been like staring, it's been on my bed for like the last two days staring at me, which is this one, Wonder Woman. Now I love the cover of this, so that attracted me. And this thing is quite big. Look how thick it is. I was like not expecting graphic novels to be like so thick. I thought they were just like thin little copies, copies on some really good um, high quality gloss paper. No, I'm completely wrong. But um, this is by Greg Ruka, and I have like two other Wonder Woman stories to read as well by different people. So I don't know if in the DC world that there's just these different, I'm guessing there's these different stories about Diana, these different adventures, different authors, interpretations. But this one has Batman in it, this one. I will have to look up more about this author dude, but it just looks so cool. Um, it really does. So I'm going to read this, hopefully this morning and into maybe later in the afternoon today. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I go. So today will be a mini sort of manga tea vlog. So hopefully it's not going to be too long. But yeah, see you guys in, uh, in a little while. realized while reading this I'm like wait all the pages don't look the same <laughs> I'm like wait I looked at the back of it and there's a it's a collection of Wonder Woman stories I didn't read the back properly that was my bad but yeah that's still cool though but I was like I was getting really into the first story I'm like oh oh okay this is gonna end pretty quickly <laughs> Oh, this little buddy went to the vet on Monday to have a health check and stuff. Didn't like that, did you? And um, went in for some results this week about your bloods and stuff, eh? He's got something in his chest that the vets didn't like the look of, so it's a bit of a mystery at the moment. 
So there's something between his um, lungs and his chest walls, like this clouded area when we looked at the x-ray. So yeah, we've got to find out what that is. Oh, they don't know, they thought you were a mystery because they've never seen anything like it before. It's not Leo. Sitting in the sun. <laughs> God, this is awkward. Oh, blinding. All right, hello guys. Just shut that. Um, uh, it's been a little bit, just just a little bit. I'm actually on my way out. Um, just to go and get some stuff from the, the mall. We don't really call it the mall here. We call it the the shopping center. Just get in the car. Look, you're getting all all the raw footage. Oh my goodness. Shut that. I just did you know a massive workout this morning so yeah I'm just going out just to get some bits and bobs it'll only be like half an hour and then I will eat and then we will sit down and get down to what this vlog is about reading and I'm excited so yeah hopefully this vlog isn't gonna be like an hour long as last time it was because I don't really want it to be like an hour long. It was my first one, but anyway, I'll probably link that down below for you guys to go watch if you would like to watch my very first Manga T vlog. And I, I had a thing about like when I watch people's vlogs, like especially students in college and stuff, I watch a lot of American like YouTubers <laughs> and um. I watched this girl called Michelle Reed and I've been watching her for like the last two or three years. She's only like in a nine, 19, 20 she is or 21 now actually. And I love her. She's she's so down to earth, very humble girl. And you know, I don't know why I was like watching her college morning routines and stuff like that. You know, I'm like 28. Why am I watching stuff like this? <laughs> but it was, I don't know if it's fascinating. But anyway, she was she always did such good vlogs and especially bits involving like oh opening a car door going on the train like just adding these little detail clips i'm like i can't be bothered to do that kind of stuff i can't be bothered <laughs> anyway so just thought i would say that i'm like for these people vloggers who just do little detailed scenes like that in their vlogs i'm like yeah and you're never gonna get me to see me doing that so yeah i'll check with you guys in probably the next hour hi there hi it's been a little bit um so i finally ate and i'm all cozy in the lounge room and there is Damn it, oh God, I've had that toy forever. Um, finally, I'm all comfy. And I'm finally about to get stuck into doing some reading for at least a couple of hours. Because um, I would like to get this edited and get it up for like sat on Saturday. I would, so. And um, there was the possibility of doing another video that I wanted to do. But yeah, that's going to require a lot of work. So we'll see. I'm going to continue with reading this Wonder Woman collection of short stories, which I had no idea. And I'm going to look up about the author as well because I have no idea who he is and I'm feeling I should know who he is. <laughs> and I've picked about five more things to read because I feel that's all I'm going to be able to fit in tonight because I think editing and blog stuff is probably going to take up my time and I wanted to continue watching Sound Euphonium Season 2. <laughs> So yeah, that's what's happening and yeah, so I'll see you guys in a bit with my thoughts on this comic. Hey there, just checking in because it's been probably only about 20 minutes since I even last recorded anything. I have never read a um, proper comic in my entire life. And this one right here is the first one I have ever read. It's by DC. Of course, it's Wonder Woman. And it is by, um, as I said before, Greg Rucker. Now, I looked up about Greg Rucker. Greg Rucker is actually um, 
very famous American comic writer, been around for ages. He's worked on things like Wolverine, Wonder Woman, mainly known from Batwoman. Um, so yeah, this was um, an interesting experience. Now, there's like, there's very many random stories in here. Um, let me just look. So I liked the first one because, you know, I've got no idea what's some of it, what was going on. So the first one, um, the he Hikahiti, which was focused on about part of Diana's um, Amazon culture. And um, I really liked the aspect. It was about she protects a woman who the Furies want to take take their her life because she has committed a crime and then Batman comes into the picture um, and wants to, you know, bring the girl to justice because she's murdered um, people who ended up murdering her sister. And I really like that short story. And then after that, um, there was like this part two, part three, part four, and then a conclusion to a story. But there was no part one, so I couldn't really get into that because... There was no part one. And then there was a final story at the end. There was um, some, what was it called? Pills? Something? Bitter pills? Um, that was a good read. Um, far as I know, what was going on with that was about some girl ended up being experimented on and her body was turned into like the cyborg and then they're figuring out who did that and that was a big massive like blow up. Um, so... I mean, even though, like, I didn't get to, like, fully, really fully experience this comic as I wanted to because, you know, middle part of the short stories, one of the stories, as I said, didn't have its part one. It had the rest of the parts. But I really like just looking through it as well and seeing the different um, art styles because there's quite a few different uh, comics in here with different art styles. Um, by different people and I mean it was nice like kind of it felt like I was reading kind of like an art book at points as well but still this was a really like you know fascinating first read for me and I definitely I'm going to read the other Wonder Woman ones I have because they have their volume ones to shorter stories so but th I'm not disappointed it's just I'm go I went into this blindly and I'm like, um, this is gonna be some stuff up somewhere where I shouldn't have probably picked this one. So that was very enjoyable. I did like that and I'm glad it was my first little intro into the comic side of things. So the next thing I'm going to be reading is a manga. So we've got to conclude some manga in this. And this is uh, volume four of The Water Dragon's Bide by Ray Toma. Now, I've spoken before about this series, that this is a slow, slow read for me. I haven't read this for oh, maybe about a couple of months, maybe a month. And I've got my little qualms with this series because um, a lot of people really, really love the series and they, they love it for the art covers. Like this one is absolutely gorgeous. I love this art cover. I loved Ray Toma's previous work, which is Dawn of Arcana. And um, I'm struggling to like l like this one because we're focusing on a girl, a young girl, um, Asahi. So he, she gets transported to a different world and you think is this girl in a nice world um, and it, everything turns pretty bleak and grim quite quickly and she ends up becoming the sacrifice for this village to the water god. And then she ends up becoming the water god's bride. And um, the water god does not like humans. And he treats her very ill, very badly. Um, not as in physically, just as in verbally. And of course, after a while, Asahi um, begins to rub off on him. And volume three um, kind of made me want to continue it to still read the next few volume volumes. So I'll see where I am with this after I've read this. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Hey there, just checking in again with you guys. I just finished reading The Water Dragon's Bride, Volume 4, and 
Mm, yeah, I am pretty sure how I feel about this series. Um, in this volume in particular, uh, the water god decides to turn into a human and um, wants to learn more about humans. And um, Asahi still suffers from homesickness. She misses her family. She misses her world. And also there is where she's dragged to see an emperor and heal him and some of the villagers become ill. And she, you know, doesn't have any powers. She only, you know, knows normal basic first aid or, you know, um, old home remedies to make the people well again. And my issue with the series is I just, every time I, you know, see Asahi on the pa any of the manga panels, I just, I feel sorry for her. And in this bit, um, the water god gives her a gift. If she cries, it will rain. He does that as a way of like protecting her because there's they there's ends up being these fires um in this village and they the villagers think the mountain god has you know cast them an ill omen and everything's burning and the only way Asahi ends up helping is when she cries because she falls into despair rain starts falling down and that's when the water god tells her oh I. I bestowed you with this gift as a way to protect you. That was in his own way, because the water god, he knows nothing about humans, doesn't really still care for humans. He only has little compassion. He's only shown a form of compassion in maybe the last three or four volumes. It kind of really tore me apart a little, watching Asahi cry and how much she misses her world, and I'm sure that's how she's feeling 24-7. As much as like Subaru is such a great support for her and has always been there for her, I just feel sorry for Asahi's character a lot. Um, I felt sorry for her in the beginning through volumes two and three. And, and I don't know where the story's going to go. I really don't. But then what's going to happen to Asahi? She ends up going home. But... As much as, you know, this cover is so pretty and the story has a really, you know, great setting about it. Great, like, historical um, fantasy setting. Um, I don't think this is going to be for me anymore. I don't really wish to continue reading The Water Dragon's Bride as much as it kind of pains me to say. I love Ray Toma's work. I loved her previous work, The Dawn of Arcana, more than this one. But, of course, like I said, the, the covers of these um, manga volumes are gorgeous, like this one. This one's gorgeous. But, yeah, I don't think The Water Dragon's Bride is for me. So I'm not going to be continuing this one. Um, and I think it's been a while since I even said I was not going to continue a manga series. So, yeah, it, it has been a long time. Don't like the, the Water God himself. I'm finding a hard time of even liking the dude. And... Even if he ends up growing compassion for humans, just of how he has been towards Asahi, I just not liked at all. So I don't think I can see myself liking his character even more. It's been four volumes. I feel like I've given it a fair shot, you know. So, um, yeah. So that is the... We'll not be continuing The War on Dragon's Bride. Moving on to maybe a better note, maybe. Um, I bought this a while ago. I bought this last month. I'm probably going to include it in um, a pickups video at some point that I want to do. And that is The Boarding School Juliet. And this is by um, Yusuke Kanade. Kanade. Now, this one is about Romeo and Juliet. And both Romeo and Juliet are boyfriend and girlfriend, actually, in this. But they're on opposing sides of different schools. And, of course, you know, their forbidden love is not accepted. Um, as far as I know, I've heard actually some good things about this and yeah, finally getting to read this. My God, it's been sitting on my shelf for probably the last three weeks. So yeah, I'll check in with you in a bit to see how I go with this. Hey, hey guys, just checking in with you again. Um, I just finished um, Boarding School Juliet, which is a romance comedy 
based on um, the William Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet. Who doesn't know Romeo and Juliet? And I never thought I'd be reading a rom-com of Romeo and Juliet. Not a lot of people have talked about this series because um, I remember it being announced for an anime but I can't remember when that was coming out. But this follows two dorms um, that are run by the Delia Academy. Two dorms are at war. We have the West and the East. And on the west side is Juliet, who runs the dormitory there, the leader. And then we have the east, which is run by Romeo. I know why I thought there was a magical element in this, but there isn't. But um, this volume focused on how Romeo and Juliet get together. And it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> there is a panel in here where Romeo where they're about to do a duel and in the middle of the duel he just bursts out that he likes her and asks her to go out with him and, and Juliet is very you know a bit resilient standoffish at the beginning but um this focuses on the beginning of the relationship there's no like kissing or anything yet there's so many funny bits in this let me find the one panel I just talked about which was um the go out me, with me one, because this rom-com, this is a good rom-com. This is good. Here we go, this one. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I love Romeo in this. Um, he's definitely a more humorous Romeo, but yes, he cares a lot about Juliet, and I actually like the Juliet in this. She's, um, she's a tough cookie, but then underneath, she is a total, like, sweet bean. She is. She kind of reminds me of, um, oh, let me think. She reminds me of from um, Okami-sama and her seven companions, Ryoko. Um, she reminds me a lot of her. And that's probably why I love her character a lot. But by the way, Okami-sama and her seven companions is a great funny um, comedy as well. You should check that out. So um, it's actually pretty hilarious of how these two have to keep their secret. Um, from the other dorm members as well. So for volume one, this was pretty, this is a fun, hysterical read. That It's been a while since I've really enjoyed a romance comedy and I was very, you know, highly anticipating to finally get around to reading this. And not a lot of people have talked about this particular um, rom-com series, but this is definitely one I'm going to be collecting for sure. So um, if you want a good romance comedy, then I highly, highly suggest picking up Boarding School Juliet. Though I don't know how many volumes there are, and this is by Kodansha, I should mention. It's already getting pretty, pretty dark outside it is. Okay, so the next one that I'm going to be reading by the creator of Midnight Secretary, a vampire <laughs> smut series. This is only volume one I have. I'm sad I didn't get the other volumes. Spell of Desire. And I think this was made before Midnight Secretary. And this is by Tomo oh Ohime. So, um, I don't really know what this is about. I haven't even read the back of it. So, we're going in blindly. So, I'll check in with you in a bit and let you know how this volume one goes. Hopefully, there's maybe an odd smut scene. That's what I want. Hello there, it's been, uh, yeah, probably about nearly an hour and a half. Um, on the spur of my moment, my family decided, hey, we want takeaway, can you go get it? And I'll pay for your meal if you go get it. So can't really ignore when you get a deal like that. So um, middle of my reading, I had to stop halfway through, but um, I finally got to finishing Spell of Desire that I... This is the by the creator of Midnight Secretary, a vamp that's a vampire smut, and I didn't know what this was about. I decided to go in blindly without even reading the back of the synopsis. And this is actually about witches. Ah! 
Yeah. Now, I thought this was going to be about demons, but I haven't read like a smutty title that's about witches. So after reading this volume, mm, I'm a digging it. I'm a digging it. I definitely, definitely would want to pick up the rest of this series. It's five volumes, so there's only like four volumes to read, but I'm not even going to borrow them from the library. I'm just going to straight up buy them because there's definitely something I would want in my collection. And I love this author. She knows how to do some hot, smart scenes. I mean, there wasn't really any highly smutty scenes. There was just some exotic kisses in here, just some passionate kisses, nothing overly too smutty yet because, well, this is just volume one. I don't know how the other volumes are going to go. This centers on our main girl, which is Karako, which by the way, she is a total darling, just like Kea from Midnight Secretary. And she is a herbalist. Uh, she learned everything from her grandmother. And when her grandmother passes away, um, she carries on um, attending to her grandmother's old clients. And she's like a healer in a way, but yeah, she's a herbalist. And uh, if you're wondering, I'm a sitting like this because the lighting is probably going to be crap. I don't know why my camera wants me to look like I look like a red beet. <sighs> lobster. Anyway, uh, so one day this guy in a black suit appears and his name is Kaname and he tells her that he is here to protect her. He is a knight, a knight of a witch's coven. And she's like, what? What? And she's also told that she has these witch powers within her, which belong to her mother. Now, she, her mother um, disappeared when she was much younger. And um, she finds out her mum is known as the Queen of the Witches, the Witch Queen. And she has gone into dormant. Her mother has, like, sealed herself away. And she has transferred her powers over to her daughter, Karako. And these powers, Karako cannot control. And so what happens is when the powers start to overtake her and they go out, go out of her body, they go crazy, the only way to calm her down or calm the powers down is when by Kaname kissing her. So yeah, that's like the smutty bit in here, like, you know, some, you know, passionate kisses in here. So Kaname is doing it purely out of duty because, you know, he looks up to um, Karako's mother and um, because she's, you know, knows the witch queen and, um, yeah, so it's all about, you know, Karako being, trying to be able to control her powers. But I'm sensing that, you know, obviously the story is going to go deeper. We're going to go deeper into Karako's mum because, you know, she's, you know, known as black magic. You know, her mother is not, she's not really on the dark side. She's not. Um, her mother uses black magic, but really a point that's brought up in here that I loved that was addressed in this is that, you know, um, whoever wields magic um, doesn't mean necessarily black magic is considered bad. Uh, it depends what it is used for and um, how you wield that. And um, Karako's mother is not an evil person so far, as the story has indicated, that she just simply has a very exquisite um, personality. Um, she likes to get what she wants, that type of personality, but not necessarily that makes her a terrible bad person. But I don't know if she is, you know, transferring all her powers to her daughter. You know, I don't know why she just didn't keep you know, them within herself sealed away. But the problem is um, when the powers go out of control, um, demons and members of the opposite sex, males, um, they immediately are lured to her. They want her. They will, you know, pretty much go and have sex with her automatically. They just fall into this um, possessiveness. And, uh, you know, Kanami says her a couple of times. And there were these cute little familiars in here. There was this one called Unicorn. The numbers, okay, it's not a unicorn, a horse, but the name is cute. It's like a, I mean, there's on the back of here, there's two familiars. It looks like a giant cat and then a little dog. Um, they are so cute. They're such a cute addition to the story. And Karako becomes to really love the familiars. And Kaname takes in familiars and gives them a new home. I thought that was a cute aspect about his character. I thought this story was a good starting point for these two because, you know, no one's confessed any feelings. The story hasn't taken off on a rush. 
which is nice. Um, it was a steady pace between Karako and Kaname, you know, mainly in this volume focused on Karako, you know, taking in all of this information that her mother's a witch. She comes from a line of witches and I love it. It's a great name, Spell of Desire. I mean, you know, the desire is Karako because she... When her powers go crazy, she, the members of the opposite sex just are drawn to her immediately. And, uh, uh, and you know, there's just this alluringness that smut titles always have. And yeah, yeah, this is one I'm going to complete. And hopefully I will cover in a video at some point. But yeah, Spell of Desire. I have been put a spell. It has me under its spell. That's such a cheesy pun to say. <laughs> Just gone 7.30 and it's been a bit of a long day. It's been a bit of a mishmash day because I got up this morning. I decided, hey, you know what? We're going to do a mini manga tea vlog. <laughs> and I, I chose six things to read and I've only read four of them. But right now um, I have quite a bit to do tomorrow and the next day. And I don't think I'm going to have a chance to um, vlog anything about what I'm reading and you know I like to do these vlogs when I actually have the spare time. I'm going to end all the reading tonight because you know I feel like just chilling out and I need to edit this vlog too and I have planned for next week when I'm more free to do another mini manga tea vlog slash graphic novels because there's still some stuff from the library I would love to read and show you guys and give my first impressions on still some uh so I can show you an example I can give you a hint a little sneak peek in what in two of those are so this is a graphic novel called ring world like a space sci-fi and um I put a picture on in um twitter sorry I put a picture up on twitter of some of the graphic novels I got and someone's like oh ring world's really good so uh yeah that I'm excited to get stuck into that but um yeah that's the end of this um mini manga tea vlog um hope to do another one for next week is the plan and uh as for why I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I said I was busy this weekend is because um, I'm going to a convention. I'm going to my local convention. It's called Avcon uh, just for a day on Saturday. But really the main reason is because um, for the first time I'm going to be meeting one of my fellow blogger friends. She's a fellow Aussie blogger and um, I'm really, really excited and she's coming here on Friday and she'll she's only here Friday to Sunday but I'm really really excited um I did announce it on Twitter either way my time is going to be taken up by that so I will not be vlogging at the con or anything um I really just don't really feel like doing that but I will take a pictures and I'll hopefully try and post at least maybe one or two pictures on Twitter or something but um mainly hopefully in the next video I do I will talk about my time of during this weekend but yeah so that is all I have even though I've only read four things still an accomplishment I have been reading a lot more actively recently I have read quite a few things like I completed Honey So Sweet over last weekend which was, oh, this great sugary shoujo gives you cavities. Uh, that was great. So, um, yeah, lots. I still have a lot of video ideas planned uh, that I want to do. Um, I've got a couple of tag videos I've got to record. So there's stuff for coming. There's stuff for coming. All the linky links will be down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video which will be next week hopefully early next week or as usual on the weekend Sundays which I said were my upload days but it seems to be so sporadic right now but yes until then friends I will see you in the next bit then bye bye for now